How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today I've got a special one where we've got the UK GE Top 16 Reboot Raditz piloted by the, none, the, the one and only Joe Revel from Team Ian, uh, TN Bill. Gotta get that right. How you doing Joe? You've got to get it right man, you've got yeah. to get it right. Team Bill, yeah very good mate, very good. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. It's a bit hot today but we're getting through. Um, so... Yeah, so Reboot Raddit, uh, what was um, what was the reason for choosing this? Because I know there are quite a few in there, but you were the only one really who pushed through to get actually to top 16, which in my opinion is a quite a feat, because I just see the leader as pretty trash, because it's one, it's Raditz, Raditz isn't that great a character, and two, it's, it's a leader a lot of people have like, shrugged, off, like, shrugged off, because it doesn't have any inherent draw, and it doesn't do much different to what the old one does, so if you want to uh, basically just have a little to say about why you picked it up yeah i want to hear the slander about raditz first of all um <laughs> but it's uh it is an interesting one because i i was a like i used to play cell surge like mm -hmm. a lot back in the day and i've always kind of after it got slammed by the ban list been looking for a bit of like a natural successor to it and you're never quite going to get to that level of silly um absolutely but it's um it, it it's I was looking for just something to. Oh, have I got you? Yeah, you still got me. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so I was just looking for something that was going to like fill that hand control gap. Um, I tried quite a few different random leaders. Mm -hmm. um, I tried like set to sell. Um, like mm -hmm. the, before they rebooted the leader, I was trying that with like the the uh, like cell surge, um, like package, if you will. Um, eventually came to um, a, a build that I quite liked with Raditz. Um, it's um, it doesn't draw, but then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, neither did like Soul Surge. Like that leader didn't gain you any inherent cards on the flip side, but you're warping a card with Raditz every turn. True. true. Um, and it was kind of like a Wish.com version of Soul Surge, where you could check the top five and you could find like a Raditz, Vegeta, and Nappa, and there was still a way of like without having to just randomly combo stuff into the drop you could discard it and you could utilize like those drop area effects to kind of just a, like um accrue advantage um basically and start just demolishing the hand down um mm -hmm. it wasn't really one of those things where it's like a massive meta pick where it's going to be like huge against like yellow trunks and red vegeta and um, red goku like mm -hmm. it wasn't massive in those like it's kind of like 50 50 matchups between those two like 60 40 ish but it was more of the case that I didn't think anyone was really going to be prepared to deal with hand control true, um, true. or yeah. like a couple of throwaway Deborahs in the side deck um, which in my opinion doesn't do too much against the deck it's only when you're like truly putting in like three to four Deborahs and other things that discard and draw apes and stuff like that that you shut down like a dedicated hand control deck like this mm -hmm. yeah it is even then as well like, uh, like well apart from some of the stuff in the actual deck the leader itself is like a way to bypass the board because it doesn't actually discard it warps, which is a nice thing. It's normally exclusive to just black decks, really, as well. Yeah, that's that's it. Is like um, there were so many times where people would be like warping black cards from their hand to try and like they kind of knew that it did something not concerning black card, but wasn't too sure what it was. So. You even have people siding in just black cards in their like side decks to just try and warp something that wasn't coloured to start turning on like the Raditz effect and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the the warp also kind of comes in handy as well because a lot of the time, you know, those Deborahs, those like apes and stuff like that, you tap to for Ribriano and they just start laughing and play that. Or, um, but being able to attack and like make them make the decision of like, okay, I have actually got to get rid of one of my cards here. I could warp this Deborah, it's a black card for sure, but you want the advantage from like getting it discarded um, yeah. by an effect. So, um, but yeah, the leader effect comes in handy pretty much for that, especially when you're warping stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like, it is quite an interesting deck. Uh, and it is also congrats to getting all the way to top 16 as well, especially with, because like, once again, it's, it's a, like a deck that you don't see it very often. It's also green, which until recently hasn't been 
the most popular colors and also it, it's a hand control deck and like where it's kind of a little bit less because like you said you were looking for different ones and like myself I was looking to probably the next hand control deck I would have thought would be OG Broly but then after testing it like my consensus was it wasn't that great you don't know if we'd have one but you found a way to actually bring one back which is quite well nice for people who want hand control back yeah and like coming into like set 17 like you're there, there is like green is coming back into the meta but they're not like dedicated hand control decks like i've played a little bit with like new cooler and stuff like that and it chips away at the hand it takes a couple here and there but it's not massively like a i'm going to take the hand away and then start hitting you and like you control the game there like in a way hand control is probably the closest you get to like true control decks in dragon ball because of how mm -hmm. much the hand is important to play in the game and like comboing and um like defensive tools they're all in your hand in this game um so in my opinion like hand control is like one of the like most powerful control strategies you can get at um og broly uh, i've seen it played like a, a little bit yes it's a good hand mm -hmm. control deck but it's very linear it you know what it's going to do if you played against it a couple of times um, whereas something like this just gave you a quite a bit more like flexibility of how to play and there's probably more people knew what OG Broly was going to do than they knew what Raditz was going to do. Absolutely, yeah. And also as well, with with this deck as well, it's just, is like, just looking at a list is like quite quite interesting on the different, all the different texts and stuff you've got. So um, before we get into all the like different, like the reasons behind some of the choices and the text, do you happen to remember your matchups that clearly from the day? Because I know it's been a while since the event, but do you remember your matchups at all? Yeah, like I, I, for the most part I do, but like I wouldn't be able to necessarily go like massively in depth. Uh, let's say I think round one was Android 16. Mm -hmm. um, round two was against my teammate um, against Yellow Trunks. Um, which I lost um, to him and then after that I think I went for a couple of like kind of like roguish matchups after that so I had like a uh, I think I had like a green starter deck Broly like green like people were turning up with like off the dupe stuff to this tournament mm -hmm. because like as you can see from this anyway um, is like because it was such a weird format where you didn't have set 17 and you didn't have a ban list like you had the ban list in effect yeah. so everyone was just turning up with whatever like mad creations they've been cooking up in the basement to this one so i like a green broly um i think I had another trunks for gta um uh, i had a couple of blue matchups in there as well so i had like a bojack i had invoker as well mm -hmm. um and i also had uh sin shenron as well was my last round oh yeah like so quite a few different ma matchups uh but still it I th I, what was it? What did you end up going? Like X X two wasn't it at the end? X two. So the only losses were to Trunks G uh, and then the final round against Geo play in Sin Chen Rum. Oh yeah, I get was it Axel you played for your round two of the trunk yeah, the trunks? Uh Oton. Oh it was Oton, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's yeah. that's the thing, like it's understandable with those two because trunks can draw enough cards to, like not really care about your hand destruction too much, and plus they can always discard off your discard effects things like the one drops the replay from the drop so they're not really getting hurt that much and then yeah Giovanni with Sin I got I remember for the day I got paired up twice against him but it was repaired the two times so I was lucky to avoid him and just stay away and uh, yeah <laughs> Giovanni is scary with his uh, uh, Sin Shenron so yeah and un yeah. the quite strong like quite strong opponents for the loss so like uh, not too bad matchups in terms of like the reason behind the losses but um, yeah, that was that was really good going through X two and also proving a lot of people wrong because I remember like when I come when I come into the start of the event, there is like you said it was like a weird format like a special format where it kind of like seemed beforehand that some of the like it would be irrelevant because it's it's just like an in between bit where it's just like a one off and then that's it. But there's actually some decks that still could pass over, and as well with this like i heard there are like a load of reboot radits in the beginning a load of mill decks between chinimba mill and quarter mill so yeah there's a lot of different like, a lot of fun off meta decks for the for the event and... i was praying to get matched against mill member at some point because i saw a couple of them like knocking around the top tables and that's just like the freest matchup in the world there was like, a couple of guys mm -hmm. who sat next to me going i don't want to be paired with you next i was like i really want to be paired with you next yeah um because you just take the hand away before they like get anywhere near milling you out and like that deck without a hand just can't survive as well yeah because it's like, it's like mills one of those things where 
there are some like he could do really well in a format, but then it loses very hard to hand control. And then if mill becomes relevant, then hand control comes back, and then like this could be a lot stronger. And uh, like it's one of those things where it basically like it's one of those things where like the meta, like depending on what the meta what happens to the meta, you can have things that can counter it, and this is a great thing for if it ever becomes a mill meta. Yeah, I mean this deck as well just kind of like like walks over like so many different rogue strategies as well. Like a lot of the time, like people practice their rogue strategies for like the big decks, like your U seven Goku's, your Trunks Cheaters, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and they practice their rogue deck against it. Like DBS is in such a good space where you can pick up any deck you want to play. You can learn it. You can learn your matchups, and you can do well with it. You know, absolutely. You, you look up. You look up. You look at Ollie at the moment with Bojack, and it's like he, you know, he put the time into the deck and everything, and he reaps the rewards from it because he knows all his matchups. The amount of people who sit down to him and go like, "What does this do? I don't know what's happening here." Until mm -hmm. they've lost um, in a big tournament. So, but then a lot of those rogue strategies kind of just like a lot of them need a hand to play because that's how you play Dragon Ball. So. Yeah, and we get quite a few of those in the UK, like even like Peter with his invoker, like he's hard stuck to that. And you get like some people, yeah, like you said, people that just go for, with a deck that's like a little off brand. Because that's the nice thing about Rogue is that where people are mainly testing for their like uh, meta matchups, they didn't really prepare much for what could be Rogue. And then Rogue could surprise them because if you never come up against it before, you've got that, especially in the best of three, that game win to try and figure out what they're doing. And then you have to adapt on the spot for game two and three. And with with a rogue matchup you normally if they don't know what you're doing you've already run one game one and it gives you a bonus because then you will got, only got to win one more game and after you've taken the match yeah and you've got them like just looking there frantically looking through their side they're going I don't know what to side for you like what do I even put in yeah. um, which apart from like the two Deborahs like the amount of times you ask people oh, are you putting Deborah and they're like uh, no I don't have those <laughs> in the side deck I swear um, as they're sneakily putting a couple in. Um, I, returning to the invoker point as well, I think Peter was actually my opponent, my invoker opponent that I played. Um, and that's where like the warp effect of that rabbit's like swinging comes in, like kind of clutch against stuff like invoker because like mm -hmm. they, they have to keep on warping the uh, extra cards and stuff like that. So again, it's just one of those road maps where all of a sudden this leader is just end up hard countering <laughs> in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so with your list, it has quite a few different tech choices. Like you got some of the things you would normally expect for a, like a hand control deck, but some very nice uh, like tech choices as well. So let's go over the deck, and if you want to go over like the reasons behind some of these cards, and like even if even for people who've never seen Raditz or played against Rabbit Raditz for the main stuff, and also some of, some of your tech choices as well. Yeah, so like starting with the leader, so we've we've spoken quite a bit about it already, but like I'll go quickly through that is every time it swings on an auto your opponent chooses a card and sends it to the warp so you don't inherently draw any cards uh, which is where a lot of people kind of went straight in and was like i mean i was the same i was like when when the leader first came i was like i still can't draw with this it's rubbish mm -hmm. it's thin it needs to go um but the more i started playing with it the better it, it became really that effect um activate main you can check the top five cards of your deck just on the unawakened side um, and find a red or green Raditz, Vegeta, or Nappa card among them, add it to your hand, and then discard a card from your hand. Mm -hmm. You awaken at four or less life, or if you have a three specified cost unison in play as well. Um, so you can awaken quite early with the deck as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then awakening, um, again, it attacks, so they warp a card from their hand, and then if there are four or more non-black cards in the warp, it gains critical. Um, and you can also place four non-black cards from your opponent's warp to the bottom um, of their deck at the start of the main phase. So as soon as you've drawn and charged, um, you put four back and then you gain triple attack as well. So that can help close out games as well as if they've been like overwhelming, they've got loads of cards in their warp, you can like triple attack and every strike, is, every hit is critical as well at that point as well. It's, yeah. uh, it's pretty mad. Um, going through the main bit then so like I, I have like a few of the like the first bit is like uh, your targets um, for that activate main on the first side mm -hmm. um, is you've got first of all Wicked Saiyans is your SCR um, because this card is searchable because it is a Raditz card um, this is such a strong like on curve SCR um, turn two like the earlier you play the card the more like back breaking it is because um, it's almost like your fifth copy of Ribrian because it's going to force a discard two on turn two um, and then as soon as they charge their second energy it just gains blocker in their turn you've got a 40k blocker against a lot more like 
aggressive strategies as well as like early pressure like 40k swings into unisons and stuff like that when mm -hmm. they're trying to establish like a turn two turn three unison um super combo is vegeta the lone prince this is searchable um again some people might not know what this one does it's like it's just a simple draw one super combo but you can play it for one and your opponent discards one so especially late game you can start tapping like tapping one to like there was times where i was like had accumulated like three or four in hand from leader effect and i can just go like tap one to play a vegeta discard one discard one discard one discard one and like you play like three or four super combos to the board take four cards out of the hand and then swing with the leader warp another one then just combo them all away into some massive swing um, and you get the really draw good. as well which is really nice uh, like it's, it's a lot better than most uh super combos where you get the play it to get this card and then even if you combo off a board as long as you're four less life you get the draw t one as well so you get essentially for each one a discard and then after that swing and get the draw back so you're literally just doing like just making use of your energy which is really nice yeah just just value it's you know like you play one energy you, you get a draw and they discard as well um it's just so much and then um, like yeah. the, the one i'm really interested in is this uh prince of destruction vegeta prideful warrior because this this is one that now cause i've been playing a lot of green recently and I, I do like the green decks like some of the green decks are quite interesting and this is a card now where i've like is almost like a staple one of in all my side decks now for green decks because of the fact that it's a something that most decks don't have which is unison removal yeah so and you'll you'll see this with the deck moving forward as well like um because there, there's also that five drop margin boo that i'll cover in a bit as well um is that like margin boo and Kieran particularly are two just obnoxious unisons to get rid of as soon as they come down to the board they just sit there mm -hmm. and they're just so difficult to clear like in the original Cell Surge stuff, you used to be really good at getting rid of them because you'd play like the Dark Broly Unison, uh, which could remove a marker itself and swing with double strike, and that was like a consideration Unison for the deck, but because you don't draw, you don't... Discarding a card every turn with a Unison and not seeing extra cards as well can get really clunky, um, and you end up with a lower hand than your opponent does when the whole point is destroying their hand. Yeah. Um, but th this Vegeta is searchable um, off the Activate Main effect as well. Um and it was it, like there was a couple of matchups where it came in and it almost became its own like win condition mm -hmm. um there, there was a game against um like the green broly starter where they were playing the bardock unison um and it was kind of again that unison was another thing that was just difficult to get rid of it had upticked itself and i'm sat there with like stuff like wicked saiyans in hand that will just get immediately taken out of the combo area and i'll just lose my scr for free mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so being able to play that and then you get like the servant effect on top of it so it turns to 30k triple um so any unisons that have got out of hand you take three markers off straight away and you can then just like swing into them and like one card kills it or like against blue you just go bring it down take the margin blue off the board after hitting it for like one time so they go it's fine i can just take one that that's fine and then you just play it kill the boo immediately and then go like swing at the leader for triple 30k yeah. um and, and if they're on three life at that point then like you just shotgun into that attack basically yeah like it just i have to see your list just literally my eyes is true to that because as well the spr is so nice and it's just such a nice tech for like something that isn't viable like isn't available to a lot of uh a lot of decks and that's just yeah because like you said the boo unison is really hard to an annoying just to be able to just take one mark off it with a leader swing and then drop this to just get rid of it and safely swing at the lead is something you don't get outside of many decks yeah and you tank the Jiren hit as well because it'll minus 10 something but you like you don't mind just drop because with Servant you're still at 20k mm -hmm. and you can remove the 3 get rid of it again because that the, the Jiren unison as well is right up there in my opinion with Margin Boo is just a completely degenerate unison that is just so difficult to like clear off the board like any 3 marker 20k unisons are just I just snapped so having yeah. an answer as free as that and it comes in with deflect as well so you can't even like um god sealing it as well so it was just it's so good True. I mean like a nice little one of like I wanted to try and maybe fit a second one in the side deck but space is tight yeah and with the these rallies as well like is there a reason for not running a full four of the one drop and what was the reason behind the ever free drop one 
Yeah, so there's a couple of things here. So the one drop one is really good, but it's only really good late game. So having four of them, it just felt a bit clunky because it doesn't actually draw anything until there's two non-black um, cards in your opponent's warp. Mm -hmm. So you can't just cantrip and draw one. You have to wait for the cards to get into the warp. And sometimes, even if you like, see you lost the dice roll, you don't get there until like turn three. And seeing like multiples of them in your opening hand um, just kind of felt a bit clunky. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved to this three drop one that I spent the longest time trying to find this card. Like uh, we we we've been going to locals every week, playing out the same TP pack. I've got about ten of that bloody Terles persuasion yellow four drop knocking around, but I had oh, zero yeah. of this card. So shout out to the guys at Dice Cup for coming in clutch and finding me this promo. Um, it's just a basic tournament promo. Um, but basically, whenever your opponent has a card warped from their hand, you tap one and play it. Mm -hmm. It's a blocker, and it kills one four cost or lower battle card for every two non-black cards in the warp. Um, and it was just really, like, it was a really handy card. I didn't play it an awful lot, but the theory behind it is you can mop up some of these, like, low-to-the-ground boards against stuff like Red U7. Um, you know, if they've had a turn where they've, like, 17 and they've like got and they've like freeze it as well mm -hmm. um, being able to go one energy and KO two battle cards and then also have a blocker stick on the board that kind of forces a play art off them so then like next turn if they want to clear the blocker they'd have to play like a Vegeta or a freeze again which then gives you the opening to charismatic villain in response and kind of um, it, it puts you ahead quite a bit on the card advantage side of things so it was a nice couple of to like find but it didn't really come up that often, but you need you need targets for the effect. Otherwise, you can end up whiffing a lot and not getting some of your discard pieces in the drop. Yeah, that makes sense. And then um, with the as you said, like with the leaders leaders uh, awaken side to be able to ult like awaken a higher life total without having to get on the four. You can evolve. Well, you can awaken as long as you've got a un green unison card with a specific cost of three. And you chose the medical terrifying horde. Is there a yeah. reason for that one over the the other ones? Because I know I can't remember many of the other ones. I know there's the Dark Broly one, which is like a po really popular one, and I think the um, there's like a King Vegeta one that goes through like his barrel removal, and then the last one is like the Nappa, which is all right. That came with the leader. Ah, oh, the Nappa garbage. Like it, it, it's so it, it basically the the Nappa is just a, a a wank version of the King Vegeta Unison, uh, which you'll see in the side deck there as well. Mm -hmm. um, the meta cooler is a lot like I, people. This unison keeps flying under the radar. Like it is absolutely snapped in half, broken. Like first of all, your uptick is discard one, draw two. Um, for a leader that doesn't draw any cards, that's really good. And especially a leader that sits there with four Ribrian, three Saiyan instincts, and two um, Bardock the Eliminator that you want in your drop, um, with three Overarms that you want to fuel as well it's really good um, yeah. as an activated main you just sit there and grab a token um, which is 15k and 5k combo power so the amount of time you can use the token to like block attacks or you can use it to start aggressing is really good yeah. it also is another win con as well for the deck is that by minus four ring um, even if your unison dies so like say you draw into this card and you've got four energy up you play it for four you spawn a token you go 15k 15k minus four and then spawn three tokens again with 15k 5k combo power and swing another three times um so you get five attacks at 15k um they got to hope they've got like a bean or something to like stop all of that aggression coming in or you can just use it to start using like, the extra combo power to start aggressing unisons and um like kind of take away any kind of advantage and resource game they're trying to play as well um, yeah. the, the unison is just it's phenomenal it's so good um, but for some reason it just doesn't get an awful lot of play but it just kind of fits perfectly into what Raditz is trying to do especially with that uptick and drawing you more cards yeah because where you're trying to control their hand because you're a hand control deck you're trying to keep their hand low so be able to pressure with 5 15k swings when their leader is 15k unless they got a bean while their hand is quite low especially when it gets to the later game when they got quite low life this could be hard to be able to combat that and just add to your whole uh, like thing of just trying to keep their hand low so they've got less options, less resources. And yeah, like you said, just for four energy to give yourself five attacks and then, well, six attacks including your leader is just really, really good. 
Yeah, and one of the common things I'd do is like a lot of the temptation is to slam this unison on three. Um, and so you've taken like a leader swing each turn. Like a lot of people kind of slam the unison three and then you can wait. It's like, oh, look, I can awaken. Um, yeah. It's really strong if you like wait the extra turn as well. So on like turn three, you kind of like use your rib round or your saying instincts and keep an energy up on defense. And then like turn four, you can like play it for three uptick it by that point you'll probably be on like five life at that point so you can use homicidal to protect it and then going into your next turn you've kept it at four markers you use homicidal to protect it you've gone down to four life now so all your super combos are live um and then you kind of get like a big like awakened turn if they've not really been hitting you especially in a lot of those slow matchups mm -hmm. um and then you can just have like a big turn when you like take a, like two cards out the round with ribrian or you can play like a rosie on top of the meta caller popping for multiple tokens as well um so they just end up like facing eight attacks with like two cards in hand is normally yeah. how you end up winning a lot of your games yeah so that sounds that sounds very scary i'm glad i didn't get to face anything like this <laughs> um and the, the well the rest of the rest of the cards going forward are like 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 champa and dormant and stuff like this the ones you would play in a green deck but the uh, next three are quite interesting is you had the cocoons uh uh, counter counter attack, the hit assassin strike, and the boo. These ones are quite interesting. And now, wait, with the Kakunza, I imagine that might have been a main deck tech for U7 because really green is one of the few, well, it was the only color that really doesn't have the like easiest kind of tech to deal with the U7 eight like eight drop Goku before it attacks. Was it main deck for that kind of matchup or? Yeah, very much so. Like, Green has no answers to that card. Like, everyone else has kind of got some way of interacting with it before it, like, swings in and starts looking at your hand. Um, but Kakunso kind of, like, it, it, it allows you to, like, they're going to look at your hand anyway, um, but the fact that you just clear it for two energy. Um, the card was just phenomenal all day, though, to be honest with you. Like, it, it just for the matter that not many people expected the card anyway, like, they expect as, like, that side deck tech against, like, uh, against Red U7, but even in the main, it was like pretty handy. Again, a lot of just like random road matchups where you're negating a leader swing, playing it for two, and then kill it because it's just like an auto on play to kill something on the on the board. Like you don't have to kill the thing that's attacking or anything like that. Um, and then next turn, it's a 20k body for two energy, which then again pressures some of those troublesome unisons again, like the margin boos and the jirans and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, that's that's quite a, it it I guess things like with green like for any of my green decks I've always got two sided. I've never gone for the main decks of uh, cause I think it, yeah, it just comes down to deck space where if you want to tech it for the main deck you expect it. But um yeah, it's, it's an absolutely necessary like card for green now if, if the main aside for that matchup because U seven's gonna ne like it's not gonna go anywhere until it gets hit in some kind of way, which is gonna be a wild in length. It's not too strong but it's not like weak per se um no nah, it, it's just come out as well so like it is very like you know you're not going to see it on the ban list like the set after it's come out and stuff like that yeah, um but yeah. like it helps in the early game this card does as well like you, you you're facing down like multiple attacks from like freezers and android 17s like being able to just clear the 17 off the board is so crucial in that matchup because that's how they're going to gain cards back because red u7 doesn't actually draw that many cards so it's quite easy to reduce their hand size down and yeah. that's probably the only card that kind of nets them a lot of like hand advantage and yeah the great thing about that is also is it's not hit by that vegeta and also the fact that it doesn't have to hit the card that you negate the attack of so you can negate one thing and in chaos something else you can potentially hit like stop two attacks of which is quite nice yeah and with the last two uh so with the hit assassin strike this one seems like quite an interesting card uh how come only two copies or why why up to two copies Oh, so it's a, it's a great card, Jim. What you do is when you draw it, um, you can like put it into your energy, um, and it counts towards an extra. You know, then then you can make some more more plays with uh, with four or five energy at that point, depending <laughs> on what turn it is. The card is utter garbage. Um, <laughs> can't tell you how bad this was. Like it, I I think I maybe dropped it once in the first game and then still lost anyway. Like I was very on the fence about putting the card in and out. I was on fifty cards before the tournament kind yeah. of discussed it with the team a little bit like that in theory it gives you a bit of an that may have been good if i played red u7 again because it's like the vegeta can't neg all the way through it 
that even when I played it, like I literally got attacked. The, the, the guy just discards two and just kills me anyway. Um, <laughs> so it was just it was after that it kind of got charged. It got sided out a lot of the time. Like I would probably replace that with um, the five drop Zamasu, just a bit more pressure to use your charismatic villains with, um, yeah. like Deity's Wrath. Um, but again, I was very unsure about that card going in because your charismatics get killed so easily. So I often found that card to be quite dead. But I think I'd probably rather that card than this. Um, uh, would not recommend. Yeah, because on paper it seems like quite strong. Like with the first ult, would like play it cheaper. It seems like, especially in this deck, like it needs a green battle card to attack and chaos. I think which. As soon as you see this in the combo, you're right, you just think, right, well, I'm going to need to out combo this so he doesn't gain more advantage. And Raditz isn't the greatest with resources, so like, trying to get a green battle card to play and stick and then KO something with this in the combo seems quite difficult. But then, depending on the situation, like, if you can get a Unison out in the next turn and hard cast this, it seems like it'd be alright, because then you could potentially back it up with Dawn potential to, to discard to. But then that seems quite situational. And uh, a lot of yeah. decks are now meaning barrier removal which makes it less effective that's that's the thing right it's like in theory it's quite nice because again it's something that pressures that boo unison because it's two 20k swings with barrier as well mm -hmm. so like in theory there's quite a few uses for the card it's just in practice like because again like when you combo it combo with it if you've got a green battle card your opponent is forced to then like they, they'll make a decision of whether they want to combo out of it and that in turn kind of works towards the strategy. This is like all a theory crafting behind the card, like whether it never came up in practice anyway. Um, yeah. But that means that they're forced to discard more. So if they panic and see this thing, I don't want you to play that for two and start comboing extra cards over something they don't need to do. Um, that kind of works towards what you're trying to do anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But realistically, there's like so many better plays that the deck was doing with that like four energy um, that I just never wanted to hard cast it. And you're very rarely swinging at stuff which is big enough as a green battle card to actually trigger that plus to, that um to energy play. So, uh, yeah. garbage card. Yeah, I might I can imagine like just yeah the Prince of Gita uh four drop is a lot more value than that as a four drop really. Yeah, hundred percent. And then I remember you said yeah, like you were saying about the margin boo you wanted to go over this. So uh, like how how useful was the margin boo for you? So it's just it's the best card in green at the moment um, for sure if you get to turn 5 like especially going into next format as well so this isn't just for like this closed format at the moment that we kind of had for the um, for the regional mm -hmm. um, the, the card's just like it's so blowout so like a lot of those like Drunks Vegeta matchup where they'll obviously grind you a bit more towards like the late game but um, they, they start getting like a bunch of Trunks is set up um, the card just comes down and just like wipes the board clear like if you've got meta cooler set up and you can just go like spam tokens or you can use a token to proc the trunks um, even having this get procced by the trunks isn't a bad thing so you don't need to then risk swinging at life um, and giving them more cards mm -hmm. it just get put straight into rest mode where its effect stays in where they have to discard two cards every time they want to swing at the leader so on the clap back they can never really get at you mm -hmm. um, it also says non-token battle cards as well um, everything um, but non to like non tokens so you could literally have a play where you go like meta callers like survive you're on turn five you go like spawn a token minus four it to spawn like more tokens so you've got like four tokens on board and then you can play this over the top or your tokens stay on the board and you again it's a unison interaction it kills off a unison it kills off an entire board ignoring barrier and negating skills as well yeah. um so you kill everything, like even like the sticky eight drop cells um, die to it because um, they get their skills negated and die ignoring barrier. All the trunks die to it, like all these big wide boards just die to it, and all of a sudden, like they've had to discard another two cards since this has been played as well. So then late game, they looks sat there with not many cards in hand. They've put all their cards on the field because they're losing advantage in hand, and then this comes down and wipes them all up. And they're never going to kill you on the crack back when you've tapped out five for it because they have to discard two every time they want to attack. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's such a good card and definitely moving into next format as well. Like it's having any way of interacting with Unison. Like you imagine like this GT Goku deck running around, um, and you just like wipe up the entire like Unison with all the GT gang underneath it and stuff like that. Like it's um, it's a pretty back-breaking card. Um, it definitely really good at anything green moving forward. 
Yeah, there's, there's only there's only a, like a few select cards in green that you don't want to play. Like King Cold, you want to do it because it hits your own fill cards. But outside of that, there's not much. Like King any Cold's other... another one. Yeah. yeah, it absolutely destroys King Cold because it, sh it ignores Barry and shuffles everything card on the board back. So like they lose King Cold's dynasty to it. Yeah, that's ab absolutely. It's, it is it's a fantastic card. Um, right, so that was the the main deck there. But then we always want to discuss the side deck because, as we know, with best of three, you're going to be playing more than half your games, like in with your side deck. So yeah. uh, let's have a look at your side deck and go over that. So you mentioned about yeah, you got the side deck to King Vegeta's Invasion Command. Did that come up useful for many games? Yeah, it honestly next to Meta Cooler might actually be like the best unison that like Green has to offer. Um, it, it came up so many times. Um, like it, it's uptick is that it kills something ignoring barrier or you can choose one card in your opponent's hand and place it in the drop so that's a random discard so that's like cells earth destroying kamehameha discard mm -hmm. where you start nicking scrs and like cooling the gates and all that kind of stuff off people um and then also like the minus x ability is like really handy like especially like i didn't come across anything like agent destruction or anything like that but like again mm -hmm the card puts in so much work in a lot of those like barrier centric matchups where it constantly upticks kills something we're ignoring barrier or adds to like the slower matchups against like your blues and stuff like that where you want to just keep on taking cards out of the hand yeah. um, and you're not necessarily too bothered about like needing to gain back a bunch of resources um, so just being able to clear wide boards with it and stuff like that there's very niche scenarios where you'll use the counter attack spirit boost effect to just play it in with three markers like sometimes when your opponent aggresses your unison where they want to put you under the counter range for charismatic yeah. um, they're doing an attack that's going to take you from two to one and you can just counter attack effectively fizzles the attack and plays this in and it's got three markers on it and they're kind of set there mm, I guess I can't play around charismatic for the turn um, and, and it's also I, it's also kind of like the uh, perfect way to have barrier removal because as I as always said in my deck profiles it's like every deck needs barrier removal because there are some things with barrier that you just need that to be able to handle and this is the perfect way because it's also like you can't really stop it because it's a unison which there's not many things that stop a unison from coming down it fits with your like awakening if you need be as well and it's just like you choose as well like 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 a uh, Earth Destroying Kamehameha is like a very good extra card for a reason because you get to choose this random what uh, gets discarded and it's the exact same thing and giving you this option where you're never going to miss is really nice. Random discard is just so broken. Like Cells Earth Destroying surviving for this long is like is is mad. Just be able to sit there and just yoink SCRs out of people's hands that they're like trying to hang on to like because they go into this mode when you're playing against hand control where you're trying to hang on to your best pieces figure out which ones you want to discard and stuff like that and setting up your big game plan relying on like one card that's going to get you out of it and then all of a sudden having it yoinked when your hand side is dwindled is it, it is so back breaking in a lot of matchups um if there was room in the main deck to play like nine unisons i probably would but at that point you just get killed because you're sat there with a handful of unisons and you're not cooler so yeah true and then next one we got is bigger more like was that you i imagine that was mainly there for the like uh you seven matchup or like the sins matchup did that come in often or that come in useful for you oh if i drew it it would be sick um but alas here we are um that, that i would definitely put it up to like three um in the side deck um you know the final round against sin um if i could have seen that card a couple more times i think it might have helped me a little bit uh, a little bit with that map but I mean I was already getting spanked about the place anyway but like it definitely would have like stemmed the tide of all these like Sin Shenron just coming and swinging at you um, U7 is definitely handy because um, again that is actually a way that you prevent the 8 drop from coming down and actually attacking Yeah. Um, so I did really like it in that matchup and again it's just kind of one of those like rogue matchups you know you come against any like rogue black decks that people are rolling up with they'll normally be focused on playing like that 5 drop Trunks that plays from the walk for two and has got dual attack 20k again it kind of shuts that card out it shuts a lot of those like um heavier matchups where people you know again a lot of road decks people are going to rely on a high end um mm -hmm. it was you know i've signed it in for invoker as well because you shut down the win con of that deck when they try and go into the instinct surpassed at the top chain of that deck so loads of different random matchups that it, it works with yeah 
and then you got in two copies of the SS Vegeta Magic Exterminator. Like, did you expect to go against some hand control with this? Yeah, again, you like it, it's a random format, right? Where like you're gonna see a lot of like off the off the goo decks coming in. Um, I really liked this as like a way of mitigating like the Android 16 matchup as well, because. Um, you like against pure hand control a couple of these vegetas isn't going to do an awful lot for you mm -hmm. um but then because there's like just a couple of random incremental discards against android 16 just having this as like a way to like mitigate like a zamasu once per turn or like the like revenge 20k guy coming in and ripping a card and stuff like that kind of i felt helped me keep in the game and again it's another vegeta so it's another target for the leaders at the main main as well so you can like search for this card off the top five and add it and then yeah. discard something as well. And then we've got the extra copy of Homosolid Comb, which I imagine just to help defend a bit easier. And also a two copies of Koizakai. How did Koizakai fare for you? Um, so it, it you know, in a way I actually probably would take the Koizakai out. Um a lot of the time when I was like it was normally in there for like yellow in a couple of like niche matchups, like I think it only ever actually came in for the Bojack matchup. Um, because the card's really good there. Um, and you can kind of create a bit of a state where you've got like a Masto and Anna Koitsukai, um, and then like the Goku, are, like they can bring in to kill the Masayan, but then you'd go discard for the Koitsukai to bring in because that's still 20k. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, um, everything that Koitsukai would do, uh, the Doria did better, um, which is the other one there. The one drop the Doria if you've got a Unison in play. Um, kill something two cost or less. So like, well, what you bring in the the Koitsukai in against like the Riposte and stuff like that. Um, the Doria just kills them without like because a lot of the time, yeah, they'll have to discard some cards, but they'll make the play which is right, which is like not dying. Mm -hmm. um, but the Doria kind of says like, no, you're going to die anyway. And then there was a couple of niche matchups that the Doria counts for as well. So if you go first against um, Android 16 and you can play down your Demogun Unison turn one. Uh, if they attempt to ramp turn two um, with their like two cost 5k guys, the Doria kills it off the bat. Um, yeah. In short one, you can kill one drop balls with it and stop the engine from churning um, and like drawing more cards and going into the fours and the nine drops and stuff like that. So I found that the Doria was definitely like a much more versatile card um, than Koitz was, but Koitz has got its place in a way. But I think I would probably like take the Koitz out and go for. Um, either another Dodori and a bigger more or another Vegeta and another bigger more. Mm -hmm. And then lastly we have the uh, Dark Power Black Masse in which uh, I imagine there just in case anybody did side in to the Devorahs you can basically make those irrelevant by the fact that essentially with this on board if they drop the Dodori they're losing the two cards they just drew. Yeah and like uh, like Koitz kind of feeds into that a little bit as well because you can do that to like mitigate the Devorahs and stuff like that. Um, but I kind of found um, Massaian was just a super handy card for like, the whole of like you know you put that down turn one um, and then start using Cells Earth Destroying to like protect it against like the yellow map built so mm -hmm. like Trunks and Vegeta particularly they'll find ways of resting it and killing it um, if you can play this and then leave an energy up where they start using cards to rest and then run over it and you just Earth Destroying and like keep it alive like they just can't play the game at that point so they just can't keep on getting like the one drops down um, from the drops a lot, the leader swing every turn just doesn't really net them too much in terms of what, what that engine tries to do. Yeah. Um, and as you say, yeah, the the Deborah like um, it, it beating out Deborah is just too strong as well. Like the fact that you can play this turn one and then start discarding the hand, start warping stuff with the leader swing and everything. Like they're just looking like I don't really have a choice but to warp the Deborah now because it's a black card as like so it might shut off the uh, like the like critical swings and stuff like that. Yeah, and so like so before we end the, the uh well before we end the video as if I can get my words out, uh I remember you've you've already started saying you like what kind of changes you make, uh what like what total changes would you make like I know you uh you said you dislike the hit and get like red quotes kite. Are there any other changes you'd like to make for the deck? I've given hit an absolute grilling this uh video for a reason. It would absolutely come out. Um interestingly so i think like the hit would come out and maybe like the deity's wrath would go in um but even like looking forward to like set 17 i'd potentially even look at like the golden freezer unison as like another like finisher for the deck 
Yeah. Again, it's kind of got that counter attack ability in it. Um, and you can empower off, like, if you manage to keep your, like, Demigra alive for multiple terms as well, um, you can kind of empower off it because it's a really difficult unison to knock markers off because you just keep on taking life instead um, uh, as a way of, like, board wipe and then just being able to take them from three to zero. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, the Cocoons is something that can maybe come out and match up the pet, like, um, like meta dependent and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, I was, I was pretty happy with how the deck played, to be honest. Uh, what about the side deck? Any extra changes apart from taking Quetzalcoatl out for maybe a more bigger more of the Dorias? Yeah, I, I think that's probably the only thing I would do. Like the King Vegeta Unison is just so so strong. It's so good. The mass sales worked really well. Um, and again, it just depends on the meta whether the Quetzalcoatl would turn into a third the Doria or whether it would turn into a um, a third of the Vegeta. Again, if you see a bit more like hand control coming into the format. Like these Vegeta and the Boras and stuff like that really shine against stuff like Cooler going forward because they're like quite incremental with like their discards. Like mm -hmm. they're not going to just take your hand from eight to zero in one turn and then start swinging at you. Um, they're going to just like randomly pinch a card here and there. So being able to just mitigate all of that and drawing cards at the same time is really important. Yeah, um, but I think that's probably the only things that I would change necessarily moving forward. Okay, fantastic. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice just for people to know, like, if they want to take, because people might be watching this, want to pick it up in a take to event, which would be interesting to see. No, I definitely keep the hips in, guys, if you want to take this to an, a, a, a tournament. I swear, the card's great. Put it to four. Put it to four. <laughs> uh, so, before we end the video now, uh, do you want to do any shout outs at all? Because I know you've got your team and stuff. Yeah, shout outs to Team T and Beal. Um, shout outs to Axel, he took the tournament on the Friday um, and then decided to give everyone a chance by flooding his engine on the way to Birmingham on the Sunday, like a champ. So we, we all appreciate Axel giving everyone a chance to play. Um, one, shout outs to Oton as well. Um, shout outs to Rob for taking it down the fight and everything. And uh, Porter as well. That is Team T and Beal. So big shout outs to everyone there. Um, shout outs to the guys at Dice as well. Uh, we've got Ethan with his top 50% announcer deck. Uh, we've got Tommy Crane for sending his regards all weekend as well. Um, <laughs> as a couple of shout outs there. Yeah, I, I find that. And also, like, Team Team Bill has got a lot of strong players as well. Like, I think I've played most of them. And yeah, they're just they're great people to play against and nice guys too. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, like, we're, it is is really nice. Like, it's just like the five of us at the moment, and uh, we're starting to put up a couple of like tops here and there as well, which is really nice. Yeah, and also like as you, I remember you said like you're going to start up a uh, YouTubing. So as soon as you get us up, uh, if anybody wants to check them out, which I recommend you do, head to the description, find that link for them, and go and check them out because a great, a great new UK team that you need to watch out for as well. Yes, please. Please and thank you. Go and have a look there. We're going to be hopefully starting to put some videos together shortly. Uh, there might be like one or two by the time you see this, but otherwise there'll be a few more bits, especially for like UK local scene, stuff like that. So please check us out. Absolutely. Yeah, so make sure to check them out if you haven't already. Also, thanks, Joe, for uh, coming on to go through your decks. It is one that was requested quite a bit in my last video going over the breakdown, and it's just nice to see new people getting uh, some like view from Mike doing well and also showing off some interesting things that we see top you are more than welcome thank you very much for having me mate that's all right so thank you everybody for watching feel free to like comment and subscribe and also as well subscribe to TT and Bill when they got the YouTube channel up and we'll yeah, see boy. you all in the next one bye for now